Hello and welcome to Living Hope Church Online, brought to you by Living Hope Church Broadcast Media. By the grace of God, I am your host, Pastor Dr. Kemi Atanda Hilori, the General Overseer of Living Hope Church. Today, Sunday, the 12th of June, 2022, I want to encourage us from the scriptures on this important topic, what matters most to God? What matters most to God? Let me start by saying very clearly that what matters most to God is our goodness. What matters most to God is our goodness. Let me take us all to the scripture for June 2022 here at Living Hope Church. We find that scripture in the book of Isaiah chapter 3 verses 10 to 11. Isaiah chapter 3, verses 10 to 11. Say to the righteous that it shall be well with them, no matter what they are passing through in this moment of their life, no matter what is happening in the world at large. Say to the righteous that it shall be well with them, for they shall eat the fruit of their doings. They shall be amply rewarded by God. It may take long, but certainly God will reward those who do good. They shall eat the fruit of their doings. Verse 11, Isaiah chapter 3. Woe to the wicked, he shall be ill with him. So the wicked might think that they are thriving right now. They might have houses. They might have cars. They might have great things that the world put so much store in. Things that the world will applaud as signs of prosperity, signs of success. But if somebody is wicked, despite all those things, God is actually not happy with them. So God says, woe to the wicked, it shall be ill with him in the end. For the reward of his hands shall be given him. The reward of his hands shall be given him. So the theme for the month of June 2022 amongst us in Living Up Church is that goodness pays. Goodness pays pays. Goodness is always handsomely rewarded by God, both here on earth and when we die in heaven as well. Goodness pays. So let me say it again to all of us. What matters most to God is our goodness. It's not whether we are going to church it's not whether we are speaking in tongues. It's not whether we are praying every day. It's not whether we are fasting. It's not whether we go on the mountain. It's not whether we are pastors or general overseers or ministers. All of those things may be important to us, but what matters most to God is our goodness, not our titles not the money that we pay in church. Some churches, some people require their congregations to pay them tithes, 10% of their income. Guess what? That even is not important to God. The number of times that we go to church is not important to God. How long we spend in church is not important to God. The loud programs that we have, that we send invitation to all and sundry to attend, 
All of those things are not important to God. What matters most to God is our goodness. Say to the righteous that it shall be well with them, for they shall eat the fruit of their doings. Woe to the wicked, it shall be ill with him, for the reward of his hands shall be given him. Goodness pays any day, any time, anywhere, everywhere. Goodness pays. Let me take us to Matthew chapter 22 from verse 34 to 40. Matthew 22 verse 34 to 40. But when the Pharisees heard that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together. Then one of them, a lawyer, asked Jesus a question, testing Jesus and saying, Teacher, what is the great commandment in the law? Jesus said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Can you begin to sense that what is most important to God oftentimes is the least important to men? I want us to address that particular gap between what is important to God and what is important to us ordinarily. What matters most to God is that we love Him exclusively and we love others selflessly. Not the amount of music we play in church, not the melodies we sing in church, not the great multitude that attend church services, not what we wear, not how we dress, not our jewelry, not our trendy clothes, not our pop culture, not all the programs that are full of feasting and serenading. What matters most to God is our goodness. Instead of focusing on what matters most to God, most times we focus on things that are not important at all to God. We love religious motions and religious duties. They matter to us a lot, but they do not matter to God. Come with me. To Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 1, verses 10 to 20. Isaiah chapter 1, verses 10 to 20. Here the Lord is speaking to the children of Israel. God has a covenant with them. God gave them rules to follow. But they emphasized the religious content of those rules rather than the practical aspects of those rules. God wants them to focus on the practical aspects of the rules, but they loved more to focus on the religious aspects of the rules. So they got everything wrong. They got everything in the wrong order. So here in Isaiah chapter 1, I read from verse 10. Hear the word of the Lord, you rulers of Sodom. So the country has become similar to Sodom that God destroyed 
because of the wickedness of the people. So God was addressing the nation of Israel and saying, the nation of Israel, because it emphasized religious motions and religious duties more than the practical aspects that God is far much more interested in. Israel had become similar to Sodom. Hear the word of the Lord, you rulers of Sodom. Give ear to the law of our God, you people of Gomorrah. To what purpose is the multitude of your sacrifices to me? Says the Lord, I have had enough of burnt offerings of rams and the fat of fed cattle. I do not delight in the blood of bulls or of lambs or goats. These are religious duties which the people of Israel were focusing on. And God was saying, I'm tired of all those things. Those things matter to you, but they really don't matter to me. When you come to appear before me, who has required this from your hand to trample my court? Bring no more futile sacrifices. Incense is an abomination to me. The new moons, the Sabbaths, and the calling of assemblies, I cannot endure iniquity and the sacred meeting. These people were focusing on religious motions, on religious duties. They were neglecting the things which matter most to God. Verse 14, Your new moons and your appointed feasts, my soul aids. They are a trouble to me. I am weary of bearing them. All the concerts you do in church, all the conferences, all the celebrations, all the noise that you make, all the prayers, God was saying to them, they are a trouble to me. I am tired of them. In another place, God says, Is there no one amongst you who has enough common sense to shut the temple and stop wasting your time with religious duties and religious motions, fasting, night vigil, paying tithes, dancing, giving testimonies, preaching, teaching, all these things matter to you, but they don't matter to me. You've got things in the wrong order. So in verse 15, God tells them, When you spread out your hands, I will hide my eyes from you. So people go to these places of religious assembly, the temples, the synagogues, the churches, Places which are marked out as houses of God. And God says, you are wasting your time. Coming there to pray is a matter of uselessness. Coming into these places to pray, to worship, is actually useless. When you spread out your hands, I will hide my eyes from you. Even though you make many prayers, I will not hear your hands are full of blood. Then verse 16. Wash yourselves. Make yourselves clean. Put away the evil of your doings from before my eyes. Cease to do evil. Learn to do good. Seek justice. Rebuke the oppressor. Defend the fatherless. Plead for the widow. These are the most important things to me. That's what God was saying to them. The children of Israel, the people of God, they were focusing on the wrong set of priorities. What mattered to them did not really matter to God. I want each one of us to come to a place where we focus our life on what matters to God. Forget the religious motions. Forget the religious duties. You know, 
A lot of people, they come into church, they do all the kinds of things that matter to them, and then they leave the church and they go into the world with the same set of priorities that they think matter to God when those priorities don't matter to God at all. So as they were in the house of God, so they will be in the world at large, doing what matters to them, but not to God. Learn to do good, seek justice, rebuke the oppressor, defend the fatherless, plead for the widow. These are matters which are most important to God. When you are doing them, when you come into the house of God to pray, God will surely hear you. So he says, learn to do good. Verse 18, come now and let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they are red like crimson, they shall be as wool. If you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. But if you refuse and rebel, you shall be devoured by the sword, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. So you can see what matters most to God are issues of justice, issues of kindness, issues of generosity, issues of fellow feeling. What matters most to God is our goodness, not our worship, not our tithes and offerings, not even our prayers, not our fasting. When we do all of those things, but we neglect what it means to be good, all of those things are meaningless before God. So that's why God was saying in Isaiah chapter 1 that we have just read, Is there nobody with common sense amongst you to shut the door of the temple and stop all of this noise making, this nonsense that you have now become experts in? But to me, it means nothing. May God in his mercy catch our attention today in this broadcast. What matters most to God is our goodness. Goodness pays. Amen. Goodness pays. Forget the religious motions. Forget the religious duties. They don't matter to God. They really do not matter to God. What matters to God is our goodness. Our good works. Point number two. Let's go and look at things which attract the blessings of God. Many of us, we have been taught to think that prayers matter so much to God. Fasting matters so much to God. Doing offerings and so on and so forth. Coming to church numerous times in the week. You know, night vigils upon night vigils. You know, some churches will declare 40 days of fasting. Some will declare 120 days of fasting. You already know that something is wrong. If the blood of Jesus is not sufficient to guarantee your answer from God, you already know something is wrong. That you must have days and days of fasting, nights and nights of prayer. Come on. If the blood of Jesus shed on the cross is, in, is not enough for God to answer your prayer, you already know you are in deep, deep trouble. Something is missing somewhere. Let's go and see what attracts the blessings of God. Matthew chapter 5. Let's read from verse 1. And seeing the multitudes... Jesus went up on a mountain, and when he was seated, his disciples came to him. Then Jesus opened his mouth and taught them, saying, 
Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Jesus did not say, Blessed is the general overseer, for his or hers is the kingdom of heaven. Jesus did not say, Blessed are the choir members and the choir leaders. Jesus did not say, Blessed is the preacher or the teacher. Jesus did not say, Blessed is the miracle worker. No, 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 no. All those people are not blessed. <laughs> They're not blessed. They're not blessed. What matters most to God is our goodness. So Jesus is saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Not blessed are the preachers and teachers, the general overseers and pastors, the prophets, the people who call themselves apostles, evangelists, teachers, the people who have become pop stars in Christianity, the people who are trending worldwide. Jesus did not say blessed are those people. Jesus is looking at what is most important to God. What matters most to God must matter to each one of us. How many of us are persecuted for righteousness sake? Would you say people who are flying about in jets, who live in mansions, who, uh, who are in palaces, and so on and so forth? No, no. I really want us to know what is most important to God must be most important to each one of us. Blessed are you when they revile and persecute you and say all kinds of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven, for so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Today's prophets are not persecuted. They are asking for money. They are doing false miracles. They are giving false prophets, pro false prophecies. They are not persecuted. How many of the prophets that so-called prophets that you know are being persecuted because they are righteous, because they love Jesus? Today, listen very carefully. We are looking at what matters most to God. What matters most to God is our goodness. Our goodness. Our goodness will attract the blessings of God. Point number three in the broadcast today. What matters most to God? The practical acts of compassion, of generosity, of helpfulness, that we show to one another, they matter most to God than any religious motion, any religious duty that we may wish to perform. Even if we say we are going to perform a pilgrimage to Jerusalem, it doesn't matter a jot to God. It doesn't at all. What matters most to God is our goodness. The practical acts of compassion, of generosity, of helpfulness that we show to one another as brothers and sisters in the family of God and that we show to people outside, our neighbors, our colleagues at work, even strangers that we do not know, that our character sparkles with the goodness of God in our life. 
Our character sparkles. Our character, you know, brings out the fragrance of godliness, of people who genuinely love God exclusively. And as a result, they love their fellow human beings selflessly. Matthew 25, verses 31 to 46, is a long read, so I will just summarize it. When the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the holy angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate them one from another, as a shepherd divides his sheep from the goats. He will set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on the left. Then the king will say to those on his right hand, Come, you blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom, kingdom prepared for you, the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you took me in. I was naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came to me. Then the righteous will answer him, saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you drink? When did we see you a stranger and take you in, or naked and clothe you? Or when did we see you sick or in prison and came to you? And the king will answer and say to them, Assuredly, I say to you, inasmuch as you did it to one of the least of these my brethren, you did it to me. Clearly, Jesus will not be asking me, Kemi, how many sermons did you preach? How many times did you go to church? How much did you give to the work of the Lord? Those are irrelevant questions to him. He wouldn't be asking those questions. I must learn to do what is most important to God. What matters most to God are the acts of compassion, of generosity, of helpfulness in my life. The title General Overseer is a good title, but it is actually useless and meaningless. God is not going to be asking me about my title. On that day, God is interested in acts of compassion, of generosity, of helpfulness. They matter most to God than any religious duty, any religious motion, than fasting or feasting, than all the noise that we bring together and we call melody, we call worshiping God. You know, all the noise that we make, all the conferences, all the concerts together, all the prayers, all of those things, they do not matter to God a shred until our goodness comes. God is much more interested in our goodness. Goodness pays. Goodness pays. And you can see, when he says these things to the sheep on the right, he says the same thing to the goats on the left. And he says, because you did not show acts of compassion, of generosity, of helpfulness, you are going to go into hell. You are going to be separated from God forever. Let's imagine that one of them said, but I went to church several times. That was a waste of time. I paid my tithes. I fasted. I prayed a lot of times. Even miracles were done in your name through me. Jesus will say, depart from me, you workers of lawlessness. I do not know you. Now you can see why Jesus says, not everyone that calls me Lord, Lord, Lord will enter the kingdom of God on that day. There are many that I will just say, sorry, 
I do not know you. What matters most to God is our goodness, not our religious activities. And may God help us to be men and women who focus our life on what matters most to God. The practical acts of compassion, of generosity and helpfulness, they matter most to God. We have to finish. This is the fourth point. This is the fourth point. And for me, this is the most important point of all that God is sharing with us on this broadcast today. We are created for good works. We are shaped, designed, and equipped for good works. The reason we exist 24-7 every moment is so that we can do good works. What matters most to God is our goodness. Goodness pays. Ephesians 2 verses 1 to 10. This is a story of our salvation. This is a story of what we should be doing if genuinely we are saved. If genuinely we are now children of God. Ephesians chapter 2 from verse 1 to 10. And you he made alive, who were dead in trespasses and sins, in which you once walked according to the curse of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit who now walks in the sons of disobedience, among whom also we all once conducted ourselves in the lusts of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and we were by nature children of wrath, just as the others. But God, who is rich in mercy, because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, he made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. He raised us up together, and made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come, God might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works. So if somebody says we are not saved by works, it is very true. But once we are saved, we must come to a place where we realize that the most potent sign that we are saved is not that we go to church. It's not that we are called pastors or overseers or bishops or evangelists or apostles. All those things are not important. Once we are saved, the Bible says, for we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works. Goodness pays. Please. Goodness pays. What matters most to God is our goodness. We should focus on doing good works everywhere we go, in our families, in our neighborhood, in every situation, whether we are clerks, taxi drivers, politicians, you know, doctors, nurses, accountants, shopkeepers, no matter who we are, the Bible says when we are saved, God gives us this realization that we are created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. We must walk in them. We should walk in them. No wonder the Bible says 
that Jesus was filled with the Holy Spirit. He went everywhere doing good. Amen. Our good works matter. They testify that we are saved. They testify that we are children of God. That's why it says, Let your good works so shine before the world that they might give praise to your Father who is in heaven. Let your good works so shine. May God in his mercy help us to understand that we are shaped, designed, and equipped for good works. If you look at the fish, you can say the fish is shaped, the fish is designed, the fish is equipped to swim in the river. It's the same thing that the Bible is saying to us here. We are shaped, we are designed, we are equipped for good works. We are created for good works. And in order to make sure that we are able to do everything that God wants us to do, guess what? He gives us His power. He gives us His power. Ephesians 3, 20 to 21. Now to Him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that works in us, to Him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. So don't let anybody say, oh, I'm poor, therefore I can't do good works. Don't let anybody say, oh, I'm not educated, I haven't got a university degree, therefore I cannot do good works. Don't let anybody say, I'm usually very sick, I am disabled, that's why I cannot do good works. Every one of us, we are empowered by God to do good works. God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us. In order to help us to do good works, we have the protection of God over our lives. I've been in some situation where if you think about it, you would say, how would this man get out of it, surrounded by enemies, threatened on all sides? But guess what? For as long as God has not said, this is the day you will die, in his mercy, in his goodness, his protection is super abundant over you. Super abundant. So that you can do all the good works that before you were born, before you were conceived, God had mapped out for you in life. So, in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 8 to 11. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 8 to 11. We read as follows. Paul is writing here. For we do not want you to be ignorant, brethren, of our trouble which came to us in Asia, that we were burdened beyond measure, above strength, so that we despaired even of life. Yes, we heard the sentence of death in ourselves, that we should not trust in ourselves, but in God, who raises the dead. God delivered us from so great a death, and he does deliver us more and more, in whom we trust that he will still deliver us. He will continue to deliver us. He will continue to protect us from every evil, from every adversary, from every enemy. Even as we are doing the good works that God has mapped out for us, Remember, what matters most to God is our goodness. What matters most to God is our goodness. And in order for us to do the works that he has mapped out for us before we were born, before we were conceived, 
He makes us to access His power. He protects us all around. He builds a edge around us. He builds a shelter around us. He builds a fortress around us to protect us from all our enemies. Yes, we will have ups and downs. Yes, we will have difficult days. Yes, we might be subject to hardships and persecutions. But the protection of God is upon our life. The overwhelming protection of God is upon my life. The enemy will never be able to overcome me because of God's protection upon my life. God will put the enemy to shame. God will lift up my head above all my enemies. Indeed, God says, a time is coming. Those who are competing against you, those who are warring against you, you will look for them and you won't find them. They will become as non-existent. Wow. What an awesome promise of God. That if I'm where God wants me to be, doing what he wants me to do, his overwhelming protection is upon my life. Finally, a superabundant provision is available for me. Paul says, I know how to be abased and I know how to be full. Through Christ, I can do all things because he strengthens me. Let's go and read it. In Philippians chapter 4, I pick it from verse 18 to 20. Indeed, I have all and abound. I am full, having received from Epaphroditus the things sent from you, a sweet-smelling aroma, an acceptable sacrifice, well-pleasing to God. And my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. My God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. There is no excuse for not doing good works. Absolutely none. God has given us access to the power to help us do good. Whether it is convenient or inconvenient, God's power is accessible for us to do good things, to be full of good works. God's protection is accessible. God protects us round the clock. God is our fortress. God is our shield, our buckler. God is our advocate. God is our defender. God guards us in front and behind. God surrounds us like the mountain surrounds Jerusalem. The enemy cannot overthrow us. When we are doing what God wants us to do, we are where God wants us to be. Until he says the time is up, nobody can cut our time short. Amen. Amen. So we have his power, we have his protection, we have his provision. May God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit help us to understand that what matters most to God is our goodness. I will read Mark 12, 28 to 33 as we prepare to finish on this broadcast. Mark 12, 28 to 33. Then one of the scribes came, and having heard them reasoning together, perceiving that Jesus had answered them well, he asked Jesus, which is the first commandment of all? Jesus answered him, The first of all the commandment is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one, and you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first commandment. 
And the second, like it, is this. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these two. So the scribe said to Jesus, Well said, teacher, you have spoken the truth, for there is one God, and there is no other but God. And to love him with all the earth, with all the understanding, and with all the soul, and with all the strength, and to love one's neighbor as oneself is more than all the old burnt offerings and sacrifices. Burnt offerings and sacrifices, actually, they do not matter to God. <laughs> what matters most to God is our goodness. Isaiah chapter 3, verses 10 to 11. Say to the righteous that it shall be well with them, for they shall eat the fruit of their doings. Woe to the wicked, he shall be ill with him, for the reward of his hands shall be given him. Goodness pays. May God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit focus our life on what matters most to God, our goodness. God bless you. I love you, but God loves you much, 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 much more. May God be with you. May God bless you. May God make this a wonderful time of refreshing, of fellowship with you. May the divine goodness of God guide you, shape you, and take you to higher heights in your relationship with God. I am your host, Pastor Dr. Kemi Atanda Hilori, the General Overseer of Living Hope Church. Until we meet again on another episode on this broadcast. God bless you. Bye for now. Bye.